I'm here today with Crystal Cheatham. Crystal received her MFA from Antioch University. She's an LGBTQ rights activist with a focus on religious liberty. Since 2011, Crystal has worked simultaneously as a ghostwriter and queer rights activist with groups such as Soul Force and the Attic Youth Center. As an entrepreneur, Crystal is the founder of two projects, our Bible app and the Identity Kit, both of which provide resources for marginalized communities of faith. As an outspoken activist, she has written for the Huffington Post on the intersection of faith and sexual identity, a faith and spirituality column for the Philadelphia Gay Newspaper, sat on the steering committee of the HRC as the faith and spirituality chair, and partnered with Equality PA to influence clergy to support non-discrimination legislations. She's the host of Lord Half Mercy, a podcast about God, sex, and the Bible, and has been featured in Teen Vogue, Auto Straddle, and LGBTQ Nation, amongst others. Um, and the, the real reason we're <laughs> here with Crystal is because she's coming out with a new book that she's leading an effort on called The Deconstructionist Playbook. So we'll get to that in a moment. But um, Crystal, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's, quite it's a really a, a pleasure to hear about all these interesting things that you've been involved in. So uh, maybe could you tell us a little bit more about your background besides this just brief introduction that I gave? Yeah, that's such a long resume. But um, I think originally I... Uh, got into this work because I was I was raised Seventh Day Adventist, and um, everybody in my family was has been Adventist on both sides. My my uh, my mom and my dad's side, and then maternal grandparents and paternal grandparents. Everybody has has lived as an Adventist or worked in the Adventist Church, um, and I came out as a lesbian. Um, and so when I came out, I had to do a lot of reconfiguring my understandings around the Bible and God and how God uh, loves and engage with, with humans. Um, and so that whole process of deconstructing my faith and reconstructing it and finding community and um, happiness was a whole journey. And um, I would attribute, you know, the, the bright spots in my journey to some of those organizations that, you know, I got to work with, like Soul Force and um, the Philadelphia chapter of the HRC. Well, that's really cool. Um, you know, everyone's got such a unique background and story and journey. And, you know, so it's interesting to hear, hear yours. Thank you. So, um, so let's go down the list of some of these different things that you've launched. I mean, I love, you know, anyone who's an entrepreneur and launches new things. That's what's in my blood as well. Um, let's start with our Bible app. What exactly is that? Oh my goodness. Our Bible app is probably my, my favorite baby because it's also been the most difficult thing to launch. I myself am not um, a tech guru. I really have, have no idea how to code. Um, but I had this idea to create a, a Bible app because I started to use um, YouVersion's Holy Bible app. And I think everybody has that app on their phone. It's like the little brown Bible. Um, and it's a great idea because it has multiple Bible translations and they have daily devotionals. And I started to read these devotionals with uh, some of my friends. And um, at some point we would come to one of the devotional days or a passage and we would just feel so jarred out of our worshipful moment because of the evangelical language around homosexuality or, um, uh, or abortion rights or the place of women in a home and you know all of these all of these conversations that we as deconstructed Christians had already kind of worked through um, and so I actually emailed the company and said, you know, there's a lot of progressive authors if you're interested. Uh, and, you know, the, the response I got back was an absolute no, that's not the direction we're moving in. And, you know, just being the activist person that I am, I took that as uh, permission just to, to launch my own app because I know that there are I knew at the time that there were thought leaders um, like those at the Vanderbilt Divinity School who are, I mean, that, that, that school is really dear to my heart because they're constantly churning out um, progressive 
theologians. And yeah. uh, I had a run in with them. I had a fantastic time with them, um, I think in 2016, which informed, you know, you know what, Crystal, if you do actually create this, a resource, there will be people to write for it and there will be an audience. And so I did a Kickstarter, uh, kind of like what I'm doing right now. And um, you ra raised enough funding to uh, create our Bible app, which uh, has multiple Bible translations, has uh, daily progressive Christian daily devotionals, and um, a library of podcasts. And the last bit is that we try to create a community space. So there are these affinity groups that you can opt into um, and chat with people around the world who are um, reading and 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 growing just like you are. So that's that's the that's the app you know, in general, and it's on Apple and Android devices. And I want to welcome anybody to just download it and take a peek for sure. That's really awesome. I had not heard of it before, you know, this recent, uh, I, I saw an article about the deconstructionist playbook. Uh, I think it was in religious news services. And that's how I first found out about you just within the last week or so. Um, so I had not heard about any of this until then. So I was very glad to hear it. It was a really good article. Yeah, yeah. I was, you know, like I said, very glad to hear about all the work that you're doing. So next, tell us about the identity kit. What's that? That was the first thing that I created um, after coming out. So I was in, uh, I was finishing my MFA at Antioch, uh, Los Angeles. And um, part of the program requirements was to uh, create something that contributed to your community. And I started to create the identity kit, which was essentially a community center in a box. And um, for fundamentalist youth who were coming out and were unable to get resources that helped inform them of what they were actually, what their process was, what was going on. And it had, um, it had a, a narrative about the clobber passages of, you know, those, those eight clobber passages in the Bible that folks used to just kind of hit you over the head if you are a lesbian or gay or trans. And, um, yeah, it was, it's, it had a game in it and, you know, I created a, a nonprofit around it um, and we would take in funds so that we could mail these kits to youth and young adults in, uh, in a, uh, you know, really not non-discreet packaging. And um, it was fun for, for a while, but I don't know, being a 20 year old, uh, early 20s, you know, trying to run a nonprofit, it was just too much for me. And um, I think that's when I really started to do ghostwriting and um, eventually, Lord have mercy, the podcast. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. How's that podcast going? You know what? It, it starts and stops. And um, during the pandemic, it's really been on pause. But um, every once in a while, I get a great guest and I just have to put out the episode. Um, and uh, I think the, the most recent one was, was in December when um, I interviewed uh, a young woman by the name of Rhea, who was talking about her mystic Christian experience. Um, but the whole idea of the podcast came from this, this desire to push back against purity culture, you know, me growing up as as a young black woman in, in the Adventist church was was one thing but then when I came out and I realized that there are very many different ways of experiencing sex and sexuality I started to push against my ideas of what a woman had to be and the role that a woman played and um, the way that a woman is supposed to avoid the male gaze and so I wanted to have these conversations with with folks and so um, Lord Have Mercy came out of that desire and has just been a great way to engage with, with authors, with activists, with um, other podcasters about God, about sex, and about the Bible. Because, you know, I'm still very much in love with the Bible, and um, I want to continue to have it in all the conversations that, that I'm having with folks. So that's the podcast. I think it's a lot of fun, for sure. Cool. Well, I know myself, you know, since I started doing all these book launch interviews during the pandemic, it's just been so wonderful to get to know so many different people and find out more about what they're doing. And, you know, it just the more we grow each other's networks, you know, with like minded people that can help each other in different ways, you know, collaborate in different ways. It's just so, so much fun and so useful. Right. I mean, for everyone. 
Amen to that. <laughs> so there's another project that we were talking about. You're just launching um, called Bemba Press. So tell us a little bit about that. Right. And so our Bible app is essentially a digital publisher. And we have, you know, lifted the voices of hundreds of authors. Um, and from our perspective, you know, we are, we are pulling together a progressive community that is otherwise very fragmented. You know, I wouldn't hear about an author unless I lived in Milwaukee where that author is well known. Um, and so thanks to the, you know, digital world, we're actually able to learn more about each other, um, even though we don't live in the same city. And my thought was, we're already doing this uh, on a micro level. What if we did this on a bigger level? What if we actually uh, created a press and started to publish some of these voices that we are finding and, up and uplifting? And, you know, this comes from um, knowing that in the publishing world, those people who are making this, the, the decisions about who gets to be published are majoritively white and majoritively uh, heterosexual, and which means that we're only absorbing the views and the excitement of one kind of people. And that is really frustrating, you know, for me as, as a black woman in America. And so I thought, you know, I tapped a couple other people and I was like, you know, what if we actually create a press where we get to decide what voices we're putting into the mainstream? And, you know, I used to work as a, as a ghostwriter. I used to help people self-publish their books. And so I really know a bit about the publishing world. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna put those connections and that, and that to good use and start to churn out some books. And our inaugural imprint is the Deconstructionist Playbook. And that is an anthology um, of 60 authors from, uh, who have all published with our Bible app. And um, the book itself takes you through deconstruction, reconstruction and liberation theology. And it's basically, I think, just a, a groundbreaking work on uh, what these folks have been doing for, for years, um, what you know, so many people have been doing for years um, and giving, uh, giving folks kind of a, uh, a rough, <laughs> a rough, uh, a rough uh, outline of, of how to move forward if they are coming to uh, these challenges in, in their own belief systems, so. Very cool, I mean, I, uh, I, I'm, I've never done anything on Kickstarter. So tell us a little bit about how that has played out in this instance for you. Yeah, so I think uh, creating, a, creating a, a press is one thing, but also thinking about ways that we can, we can equitably pay, pay our authors um, and make sure that, you know, we're, we're, as we're using capitalism to, uh, to, to project our voices forward, we're also pushing against it and kind of breaking some of the systems that oppress folks. And one of the things that we find oppressive is the way that some publishers pay or don't pay their authors. And so by you know, launching this Kickstarter, um, our Bible app is saying that, you know what, we wanna make sure that we pay our authors fairly. So every author who has, you know, put something into this anthology is gonna get paid. Um, they're gonna get paid a percentage of, of you know, what the book actually makes as a whole. Um, and that uh, you know, whatever funding else comes out of that is going to help our Bible app continue to uh, create more books for this amazing audience and from this wealth of, of authors. And so we put the Kickstarter up and we were like, you know what, it will be a success if we hit, um, $50,000 or uh, if we sell 2,000 books. And um, right now, one of those goals has actually been hit. We have succeeded our $50,000 goal. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Um, but the other goal is uh, that we, we are still hoping that we can hit that 2,000 backer mark because putting so much emphasis on, on the, the financial part still feels icky. And so we thought this is a community driven effort. And we wanna see if there are 2000 people out there who actually care about this and wanna support it. Um, and support can be $5, support can be $10 um, uh, to actually you know, back this campaign. And so we're asking folks to do that. And we're gonna be able to publish this book 
um, come April and May, folks are gonna have a physical copy of the book in their hands. And I get excited about that because I've been reading these people in the app for years and getting so excited about them only to, to really fully understand that there are folks who are going to engage with an app you know, because they're comfortable reading things on a phone. And then there are folks who are never going to pick up an app because they need like a tangible book. And so this for me is about reaching a whole new audience of folks who are alive and they care about, you know, what's actually going into their minds and they want to support something um, that is, that is, you know, good for the collective conscience. So. Well, I think it's very exciting. And, you know, I ordered uh, a, a book and made my pledge uh, already. I'm, I'm looking Thank forward to, to seeing it. And I, I looked across, you know, this great group of, of contributors that you have. And there are many of these folks that have spoken at my conferences or, yeah. you know, I've otherwise been involved. In. So Cindy Wang Brandt, Lenny Duncan, Brandon Robertson, um, Mickey Scott Bay Jones, uh, Caitlin Curtis, um, there's more, you know, I mean, it's just like, I was really excited to see, you know, these great names, you know, great contributors to this project. Yes. I got really lucky with, with those folks who, um, you know, early on, you know, these folks were early adapters of our Bible app and, and believed in us before we were actually anything big. And um, I think that we published some of these folks we published before they actually got, you know, book deals and, and became who they are today. So we are essentially relying on their platforms and their voices to lift up other people that are really dear um, and may not be known yet, but hopefully, you know, do make a lasting impact in, in this arena. And, you know, right off the bat, I'm thinking of Bailey Bronner. I'm thinking of Jason Kuhn. Um, I'm thinking of uh, Gina Thomas, some of these folks that you may not have heard about, but hopefully will be elevated because of this, uh, this anthology. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, I actually do know Gina, uh, but uh, I, they're the folks I've never heard of before. And there's several other folks that you've got in this book that I've never heard of before. So, you know, it'd be good for me just to expand my own, you know, knowledge of, you know, up and coming authors from, you know, a progressive space that, you know, I want to get to know. I hope you fall in love with them as I have. <laughs> Well, you know, it's just good for you. You know, congratulations on doing this. I mean, I, uh, I'm i in the process of pulling together an anthology with 30 other contributors, too. A completely different topic. It's but, a lot of work. You know, I just was going to say, I mean, hurting the cats, you know, I mean, yes. no, no matter whether it's a conference or a book or, you know, when you're, when you're trying to coordinate a whole large group of folks to do all some, you know, something meaningful and in, in, in tandem, it's not an easy thing, but it's, it's a powerful thing. And, you know, as you said, I mean, just, just having the benefit of the social media and other communication channels of all these different contributors that you've got to help spread the word about, you know, this book and all this group's collective work is just a wonderful thing. Right. I think that when it comes to um, deconstructing from toxic theology, I'll say, it, it is something that is happening right now and something that isn't quite getting the attention that it deserves. You know, we want to know that, we want folks to know that they are in good hands, that that this is a healthy thing to do, um, and that it doesn't mean that you are no longer a Christian um, because you are going through this process. And so by showing folks that like, there's so many people who have who've been there before you and you don't have to be lonely on this journey. I think that's that's like the thing that 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 is the battery that powers my work is the, the desire to get out information for this new and beautiful experience. Very cool. So if people want to contribute to the Kickstarter campaign, they can just go on to Kickstarter and, and search for the deconstructionist, I assume? Yeah, you can go to Kickstarter, search for the deconstructionist playbook. You can go to our Bible app. It's right there on the on our on our first uh, our front page. If you download the app, it's in the app as well. Like we exhausted you know, every platform just <laughs> knew this was alive. Well, um, in the book you said is coming out in April, May? Can April, May. Yeah. Folks are going to start getting those in the mail. So we're asking as many folks as possible to um, help us at, get close to that 2000 backer mark. Like we really, we really need it. We really want to see the community um, back this project. And if you have the means, please do it. Good, good. So what about going forward? Is there anything, you know, in terms of follow-on books or other things that you can talk about yet? 
we already have uh, two uh, proposals that we are, you know, considering and really excited about. And um, the goal was to have a follow-up uh, guide for the deconstructionist book that will hopefully come out in uh, August. Um, and then, you know, hopefully something else in December. So once you're on our list, you're on our list and we're gonna continue to, to let you know what else we're churning out. But we have some amazing voices and we wanna, we wanna spend as much time as we can uh, lifting them up and, and showing the world, you know, what they can do. Excellent. Excellent. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, we definitely need to stay in touch because I want to do, you know, a book launch interview with, with all the books that you come out with. So uh, Please. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's other ways for us to collaborate as well. So I agree. Crystal, Crystal, thank you so much for, you know, all this work that you've done and uh, lifting up all these voices. And again, I really love and respect your entrepreneurship, you know, to just go out and launch new things. Right. I mean, that's just so cool to see. I see myself in you, Brian. <laughs> well, you know, I think we have something in common. You know, once, once it's in your blood, right, to go start new things, it's like that's what you have to do. And so I know. <laughs> I think we're definitely kindred spirits in that regard. So it's wonderful yeah. to see. <laughs> I love it. Well, Crystal, thanks again for joining us at this interview and uh, best wishes with the book and with the new press. Again, um, if you go to www.ourbibleapp.com, you can find out about all those things. So, Crystal, thanks again. Thank you.